Hey y'all, it's Taryn. It is Sunday, November 11th. Welcome. I hope y'all have had a great week. As you can see, we're shooting kind of differently today. Um, we're still out in my dungeon. Um, so the location really isn't different. Usually you sit on top of my sewing machine right here. Um, so all of this is usually behind you, my bulletin board. This is um, a box. It's a crate, a wood crate. Um, it is filled with baby food jars full of buttons. And then there's some buttons and beads and stuff in little tiny jelly jars from the conferences we go to. But you are sitting on top of the cabinet that's usually behind me in my videos. Um, I had a lot of stuff this time, so I just decided to do it this way instead because it gave me more room to set stuff, but like it matters. Um, let's see, what else? I got my washer fixed. That's good. If I repeat myself, I'm sorry. I've started this video several times. Um, Dax, this wasn't a good part of the week. Dax got stung by a scorpion like at 1.30 in the morning, which means, yes, we were sound asleep. Um, that makes it really hard to go back to sleep, and it makes it tough for the next few days to go to sleep. This really isn't um, the kind of time where we get a lot of scorpions in the house, so we're kind of baffled by it anyway. But, bless his heart, it stung him right in the middle of where he still has marks from the cat scratch fever. He still has probably a place about this big right here that hasn't healed up and it got him right there. So I don't know, we thought maybe it's, you know, sent from God and the scorpion uh, venom or poison or whatever they use is gonna heal it right. It was the little extra something that he needed for it to go away completely. Hadn't happened yet, but it's a good thought, right? What else? We did not go to the Renaissance Festival this weekend. I know. Um, instead, we did stuff like Dax was cutting some of the underbrush away from the trees yesterday, and um, I was burning it, which is my preferred job. I am, like, a safe pyro. God, I love fire, but I don't set bad things on fire, so... There is that. Um, what else? I guess that's about it. You know, work, and then I'll show you the stuff that I have played with around here this week. Um, I said I had a sweater that I was going to use for another pumpkin. This is it. I made him. I couldn't be happier with the way this pumpkin turned out. I love the pattern the way it is on there. So, I'm very pleased with it. I had thought about um, putting some leaves on here before I did this, came up and did that part, and my intention was to do it, but then when I started doing everything, I totally forgot that I intended to put leaves on there, so I didn't have any, because that's the way I always work. I'm telling you, it's pathetic. Um... I worked yesterday, um, I had shown you before Addison's stocking. This is from an old cutter quilt that I bought years ago. Um, I've made a big uh, piece, a round piece that sits on the Lazy Susan on our table. I usually put it out like at Easter time because the colors are light. But this I had stitched on, I stitched the star and just this little zigzag for the tree. Um, this is felt with a button. I've got some little bells, uh, gold and white. The, I printed the pattern for the tree and the star out on some of the stuff that you, you print on it and then you can stick it on there. I can't think of what they call it right now. Um, but you peel the back off and it sticks on there and then you wet it and it goes away. Um, I've still got some muck left on here from it. I think I'm going to have to wash it probably again. I washed it, I soaked it, but I think it's going to need to actually be washed. Um, I'll put some 
kind of treatment stuff on there. It's a DMC flaw, so that shouldn't be an issue with running or anything like that. This stuff works great, but I probably left it stuck on there for two years. Um, don't do that. This, the lining for the back, is from a duvet cover that we had for our bed. Um, it's noisy, and Dax couldn't stand it, so he complained every time I put it on. So now I'm just using it for fabric. I'm just cutting it up. And then the top is, I just made a little band with some fabric that I got at Tuesday morning. They had this little fat quarter bundle. And I don't remember if I showed this before or not. Um, but they had it with the tan background and then also with green. I used the tan. They have a little tan plaid that's pretty cute. Um, and then they had this with the mousse on it. Oh my god, how cute is that? They have it in green and like a burgundy color. Those are so freaking cute. I had to get this because of... I want to call him Meese because that was my dad's thing. Um, he used to tell us when we were kids, well, if the plural of goose is geese, shouldn't the plural of moose be meese? So we always called him Meese. Um, Abigail has an irrational fear of moose. And it's irrational because until she was in Canada, not long at last year, I guess, um, she'd never even seen one in person. She had a dream where a moose broke into our house when she was little. And from that dream, she has hated moose ever since, or meese, as it may be. So I got this because I need to make my daughter something with this because that's how we roll in this family. Anyway, I'm going to wash this again and then I'm going to add embellishments to the tree. I've got um, a pack of Christmas buttons with different things, you know, um, some gifts that I can use to put under the tree and things like that. And after, I don't know how many years, Addison can have a stocking. That'll make two of my kids who have stockings. But I am so proud of myself for getting it done. So there is that. Um, been digging out um, Thanksgiving decorations, putting away the Halloween. And so I know I've shown these before. I've got fuzzies all over them. This one, I'm going to... This was... I stuck it in a frame I just happened to have. Um, there's no glass. The burlap backing is puckered. This is a machine applique that I did years ago. And I need to do something different with it. I did it close to Thanksgiving last year. In, or that year. Whenever it was. And I just wanted to get it done. This one is from 1996. Um, I think it came from a Just Cross Stitch magazine. No, calendar. I think it was from a calendar. Um, the little bears. So that was pretty cute. So I came across those, so I thought I would share. Let's see. Things that I have done. I worked just a hot little minute on, um, this one, Welcome Fall. It is by Diane Arthurs from Imaginating Ink. <clears throat> I need to do this. And basically, I don't even know if you can see it. I've got the gourd finished. And whatever this kind of pumpkin is right here. In the post here. I worked on that a little bit. So probably next I'll Go start with the bottom of this little, the little dress there. So, um, nothing that uh, is going to knock people's socks off, but it's a step in the right direction, right? I did work on this from Creative Circle uh, Cottage Quilts, and last time I told you I was tired of working on the other side, and I came over and started working on that quilt. Well, I got over that, um, and I went back and 
yeah, I did the back stitching on the tree. Can you see that? It's an actual tree. That tree up here at the top is finished. There's some outlining to do along here, the tree trunk. Um, and then I came over here. Oh my gosh. I came over here and did some of where well, you can see a little bit of the bushes coming through right there. So, but I'm kind of, it's a tree. It's an actual tree. So, I was kind of pleased with that. And then, for no apparent reason, I decided, you know what, let's just grab something out of the big box of whips. I'm sorry, I have a warmer back there. And it is not a cup warmer. It is a candle warmer, but I didn't have any candles I was going to use on it, so I used it to keep my coffee warm. Right? Um, Just Cross Stitch magazine from December 2015. So it's not even that old. Um, I am doing this one. This snowman right here. Um, I don't know if you can... He's got on his hats like a little red and green plaid. I'm sorry, I had to put a lamp over here because every time I turned on to video, uh, for pictures the light was great, for videos it darkens it up every time. So anyway, I'm doing it on a blue fabric. Um, and I'm sorry, he didn't have to be sideways, I guess. Um, you would think I hadn't started this video 37 times. Anyway, this is all in his hat, obviously. This red up here is 666, and this red down here is a different one. Um, I don't know why. I, I did like four squares and ran out of 666. And then I was going to work on the green that's down here. Well, I didn't have any more of that either. What the heck? So I had to go to the store and buy some more. So I got a whole lot of almost nothing done on this one. But nevertheless, I did work on it. Which means I did not work at all on my Every Bird Welcome. I didn't. Because I pulled that one out to work on it. And then yesterday, because I had no business doing it, I started something else. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, it's called Little Christmas um, by Bent Creek. I'm not doing the border. I'm doing the branch, but not the rest of the border. And I had decided that before I started stitching. That's not because something went horribly wrong and I decided to do it. Not to do. That's not to say something didn't go horribly wrong, but that's not why I'm not doing the border. So, here is where I am. This is just a piece of tan linen that was just in my box of fabrics. I don't know anything about it. Um, what I did wrong is I went to count down for this why I judged it based on this the pine needle um well I based it off of this one when I did my counting and I should have this one so it's uh, over too far this way and it's a little bit too low but I decided I discovered it after I had stitched this whole word I discovered it when I was stitching the A and I decided screw it I'm not taking it back out. I adjusted on here so that it didn't run into the the Christmas ball. And if I need to, where it says Christmas, I'll adjust then too. But I'm loving it. I absolutely love it. And I hope that later this afternoon I'll be able to get it done. I still have to go to the grocery store and Dax wants to go to the coffee shop and hang out a little bit do a little bit of research on some stuff, so I guess we'll do that. Now, here's the big deal, y'all. It's the big deal. 
I don't even know if I'm tall enough. Yes. Um, linen and threads. Do you see that? Do you see straight down all the way? Y'all, I finished October yesterday. Finally, finally, look at that. Um, I was working on this. Oh my gosh, y'all. I was, I had done the top half and I was doing this down here at the bottom. And I was going all the way across. And I got down to about where it gets ready to come to these smaller ones. So, probably about that far. And I realized that I had not left any of these open spaces. I had done it solid. I left this line in, but none of this. I had to go back and rip all of it out to the top row. That was the only one that was correct. Oh my God. Are you freaking kidding me? So, yesterday I stitched this part twice, but I was so happy last night when I got this done. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you. So, that leaves me a month and a half to get the December part done. This will be so wonderful to get this finished. I will be so happy. I mean, it took me... What, 25, 26 years to get the Norman Rockwell one done. So this one in two years, it's like a miracle. It will be like a freaking miracle. So I'm pretty thrilled about that. Um, what else? What else? I think that that was all of my stitching. I'm pretty sure. Um, I... When I made the um, pot holder with the chickens on it, and I had posted a picture on Instagram, my mother-in-law was like, oh, I want some in blue terry cloth. Um, my mother-in-law changes things in her house like crazy. Um, she redoes, redecorates the bathrooms in her house. Um, it's got two bathrooms probably every couple of years. While the kids were little, she did it every year. Um, she changed the bathroom. She had bedrooms decorated for the kids, and she changed those decorate those room themes every year probably. She does the same in her bedroom, all of it. Um, she used to rearrange the furniture in the living room like every three months. I mean, it was, you never knew where things were going to be when you went to their house. Um, the doctors told her she can't do that anymore. They don't want her moving heavy stuff. But the one thing that has been constant for as long as I've known Dax, which is 26 years almost, um has been Pillsbury Doughboy stuff in her kitchen. She's had the kitchen remodeled, new cabinets, new countertops, new floors, but the Pillsbury Doughboy stays. So, I, um, for Christmas, she's going to get the pot holder she asked for. So, I went and bought a blue towel. She likes terry cloth pot holders. I mean, that's in it's like the doughboy stuff there are some things she changes constantly there are some things that she never changes stuff like this is one of them she likes a certain kind of dish towel certain kind of rag certain kind of whatever this is the certain kind of pot holder that she likes so i went and bought a blue that matches the doughboy color of blue bath towel there's two layers of that and two layers of batting I was gonna put more batting, but the terry cloth is, I bought one of the nice towels, so it's pretty thick. So I think this will be enough. I had some stuff that I was gonna use for the binding, but I don't like it. So now I gotta find binding. But I worked on that yesterday. Um, I am gonna do four for her. Um, some years I give her uh, Doughboy towels kitchen towels if I can find them 
Um, they're getting harder and harder to find and more and more expensive. Sometimes I have actually, um, my sewing machine will do embroidery. And so I have a file on a zip drive somewhere that sometimes I embroider the towels myself. But, so I did those yesterday. Um, I have worked a little tiny bit. I'll try not to be so noisy as I was last week. On this, you can see the diamonds where they are and the sparkle of them. There are a few that are here and there in other places because if I have just a little bit, like you can see down on the tire down there every now and then you can see a sparkle because some of them have been put in there. If I have a little bit left over, I'll look for where else they go. But it's coming along and no big hurry because I'll have to. So, what else I did? Um, I did my chenille. Oh my gosh. It, I, that is exactly the color that I wanted. It matches here in the leaves. Um, I could not have asked for this to be any better, really. I couldn't have. Um, I am so happy with that chenille. Now, thank you to those of you. I got um, names of a couple of shops on Etsy that sell the chenille. I wish you could see. I don't think the color's coming through well, um, but it is so freaking awesome. There's the back again. Um, and I'm going to go into Etsy and I'm going to like those shops so that I can, if I decide I know where to go get it. Um, I have not tried the orange to dye my own yet. When I was looking for chenille and I couldn't find what I wanted, I was like, those people get it somewhere. They dye it. Um, so I started looking just for chenille. You know, plain chenille. Um, yeah, that didn't bring up anything. That's, I guess, kind of not a thing. So then I'm like, well, what do they use? What do they use if I can't find just something plain? And then it struck me. It's yarn. So I went to Michael's and I bought a ball of yarn and I have, uh, I bought green, I bought orange and I know it was brighter because this is all synthetic. So I bought four synthetic dye. Um, I bought orange, I don't know what I did with it, the bottle's around here somewhere because I have not used it. Um, and then I went, I was in Hobby Lobby, and I bought a green, and it said peacock green. Oh, here's the orange, the orange one that I got. This is, I, I'm certain that it says apricot orange. I'm certain it will be much brighter um, than I'm going to want it to be. So I knew that I needed something, but they didn't have anything else in Michael's. So I was in Hobby Lobby, and because I wanted this color of green. I bought a green and it said peacock green and I knew that was going to be much brighter than I wanted. It wasn't going to be the green I wanted. When I was dyeing this, a piece of this green, and I first pulled it out of the water, it looked like pulling spinach out of the can. I was like, oh no, no. So I bought another color that was called sandstone. And so I pulled the green out I rinsed it some and um, squeezed the water out and let it start to dry while I got another pot boiling of um, the sandstone. It says you have to do this on the stove. You can't just do it with hot water because you need the water to stay really hot to get the synthetic fibers to die. So um, that seems pretty true. I tried to shortcut it and it didn't work. Um, I had a lot of white left in it. So 
anyway, um, I mixed up a pot with the sandstone and I put it back in and that's how I got this green. You can see there a better idea of what color it is. Um, I don't know why I thought I needed to dye five yards of it, but I guess I've got green if I want it again. I took another piece, I just cut some off to put in there after I took that piece out. And I guess some of the green from this came off because I was just trying to dye a piece of just the sandstone color. And it's not, um, I don't know if you can tell, it's pretty variegated. It's got places that are really mossy green and then places that are just the kind of beige sandstone color. So I don't know. We'll see what I do with that. If I have time later today, I may play around with the orange and see if I can't do the sandstone. Do the orange just like I did this with the green and then do the sandstone second to tone it down and get a color that I really want. But I couldn't be any happier with the way this one turned out. Um, the color is just absolutely what I wanted, so that was thrilling. What else? Oh, I did this yesterday. Hold on. I went through, I grabbed a couple of stacks of patterns and stuff that I have and went through them. Um, Kind of trying to pick out, okay, this is what I really want. You know, I know this I want to make. Some of them are free patterns from the internet, um, books, magazines, actual patterns, whatever. So I went through and separated out. Um, and it wasn't even like, okay, here, I want, I'm going to get rid of these. There are things in the other ones, it was just kind of like, I like that, but I'm going to think about whether I really want to make it or who knows, maybe I might want to make this later or whatever. So I pulled out the ones that are like, no, I want to go ahead and get these kitted up. Do you see this? This is the, I want to go ahead and get these kitted up. Okay. After I did that, and I was horrified by this stack of, um, I want to get these kitted up. I went back and counted. I have 57 whips right now, which is no big deal. That doesn't bother me. Um, because some of them I'll finish just like the Merry Little Christmas. That'll get finished today, probably, hopefully. Um, and others I work on and then I just get a bug and I want to start something new. So it's no big deal, right? I have already kitted 70. I have 70 projects in a tub sitting on the counter over there that are kitted up. Um, fabric and threads. Some of them are missing a few threads. Um, as I finish something, I look through the threads that were in that one to see if they go for any of the others that are missing threads, and I keep a list. Um, I try to fill them in from the front going back, uh, so that that way my threads are, uh, my threads. When I go to do something, usually I just pull the next one from the front. Sometimes I'll dig through and pick something particular, but usually I just pull from the front. So. 57 whips, 70 already kitted. This stack of the things I want to kit has 60 patterns in it. 60, six zero. Y'all, that is like almost 200 things just right there. I have, that is not counting um, the I have three magazine holders right here full of patterns. That's not counting any of those. Um, those books right there and patterns, there are several in there. And there is a stack on the floor over there about this high of more patterns and magazines. 
And there are some that are squirreled away in a cabinet over there. Oh my God. I was just like looking at next year and I'm like, okay, I want to get these 20 things finished next year. I'm already 10 years down the road at 20 finishes a year. And some of the things I have are big. They're not going to be a year. Oh my gosh. So, is that crazy or what? So in that vein, look, I got two more magazines. <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all, I'm losing it. But look, this one, this is in that um, one of those books that I got last week. Um, but this one has some pretty cute things in it. When I first saw that picture on the cover, I was like, oh my God, I've bought something twice. Because we never do that, right? Um, but it has other things. Look how cute that is. I mean, seriously, come on. Um, so there are other things in here. I thought this was pretty neat. This one, they've got it on a blanket. Um, but even on a piece of dark fabric or some of the stuff that's kind of sky looking, that would still be cool. It doesn't need to be on a blanket. And then this one, I just loved this. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to put it on a shirt, but all of those together like that, it's freaking adorable. So, and it has some other things in there too. So I guess I need to go through and mark them and add them to my list over here. Oh my God. I'm just like, and y'all, that doesn't count um, sewing projects, general craft projects, um, quilting stuff, uh, crochet, I mean, embroidery. I've got a crap ton of embroidery patterns and things that I've kitted up sitting around here. It's ridiculous. Speaking of quilting, I have this. This, I did the embroidery on these a long time ago. Um, they came from some free patterns. I think she did one every month. Um, so there are, I, um, like on this one, I added the buttons because the flowers were just a little round like that. And I thought the little buttons was a nice embellishment. That's why it's in the middle. I think it's the only one with them. So, anyway, here's my question. Um, here's the back, my backing fabric. And all I did for quilting was just right around in the ditch around these. But I have had that much done for years. And I can't find stuff, binding that I like. Are you noticing a thing with me? I have issues with binding. So, anyway, here, I want an opinion. It kills me that the reds don't match. I could try to find green, but the greens won't match. So, I, does this work? I need opinions. Does this work, um, this red check, even though the reds don't match? See, it'll be kind of like that. It also doesn't match, really, the candy canes on the back. But I didn't want just like plain white or anything. So I don't know. Let me know what you think. Should I go ahead and bind it and just be done? I kind of feel like I should because what's the point of just letting it sit for 10 years while I am picky about the binding? So there you go. I need to know that. Okay, y'all. I think that's it. I feel like I've rattled on forever. Um, welcome to the new subscribers. I appreciate it. Had questions about the rodeo, um, the dates. It actually, the one in Las Vegas, it's the finals for, it's what everybody spends all year working to get invited to. Um, these guys can win a crap ton of money in the finals. Um, and I mean, when I say crap ton, I mean like hundreds of thousands of dollars 
there. Um, you get invited based on how you've won throughout the rest of the year for sanctioned radios and all of that, which has nothing to do with anything I'm saying. Um, they go on from December 6th through the 15th. The 15th is the closing. So it's um, 10 days. Is that 10 days, I think? Um, we've decided to be responsible adults and go do our freaking continuing education and not go play at the rodeo. Maybe next year we'll go play. We're trying to um, we're trying to cut our practice back a little bit, the accounting part of it. Um, we're working on some other things so that we can scale back and Dax won't have to sleep at the office and all of that. So maybe next year we'll be in a place where we can just go play if we want to and not feel bad about it. That's our goal. Anyway. So anyway, that's when the radio is going on. If y'all are out there, um, as McKenna said, it is great people watching. Um, during that time, it is a, I know Vegas is always a party atmosphere. It is um, exceptionally so during the rodeo. So anyway, we're going to go do accounting instead. Yeah. Woohoo. Um, I think that's all, really. Like I said, I feel like I've been rambling forever. You people who do like two hour videos, I don't even know how you do that. That's just, it blows my mind. That's all I know. Um, I really hope to be able to get some good stuff accomplished this next week. Although, between, my gosh, finishing October and getting the back and the border at the top sewn onto Addison's stocking after however many years it is, I feel like I've won the lottery, I swear. It's craziness. And this, this, like I said, again, adulting is stupid because something like a trim on a pillow can make me so freaking happy. Um, yeah. I guess there you go. That's this week's edition of Adulting is Stupid. Okay, I'm going to go now, and I guess we're going to go get coffee and chillax a little bit, and then at some point i got to go to the grocery store, and I had to bribe Wyatt to go get some stuff for me yesterday, so I told him I'd go fill his truck up with gas today, so i got to go do that too at some point. Yay! I hope y'all have a wonderful week. I hope you get a lot accomplished. I hope that those of you who are out there where the fires are out of control in California are safe and doing okay. Um, I can't even imagine. I That is just so scary. Um, thank you to my new subscribers. Thank you for your comments. Thank y'all again for telling me shops where I can buy the chenille. Um, there's a good chance that I will be doing more buying than dyeing because um, unless I just want a whole bunch of the same color, dyeing isn't cheaper. Um, so <laughs> this is kind of expensive when I only need a cap full. But I do appreciate it. Y'all let me know on the trim on that little wall hanging or whatever I decide to do with it. I hope y'all have a wonderful week. Thank you for everything, and we will see you here next time. Thanks, y'all. Bye.